Now, in this particular section, we are going to look at another um, uh, group of organisms that are called as the protist. Uh, the protist are the first of the eukaryotes that we will look at. Remember, eukaryotes are cells that have organelles, such as nucleus is an organelle, chloroplast is an organelle, uh, mitochondria is an organelle. So these are um, cells that are more complex and they're organelle-containing um, cells. Now, uh, the simplest eukaryotes that are single-celled are mainly protist. However, there are some multicellular and they're large, but most of them are, are unicellular. Uni means one. Protist cells have a nucleus, they have one or more mitochondria, they have chloroplast, and they have a life cycle that is either haploid or diploid. Haploid means half the number of chromosome and diploid means twice the number of chromosomes. So we will form some kind of more complex reproduction in this particular kingdom. Now here are the, are the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. I think it's important that you review them. Um, the, the prokaryotes are the archaeas. Remember I said they were they had their own domain and then we have the bacteria that were on their own domain. And then we have all the eukaryotes that are the protist, the plants, the fungi and the animals. This is the latest way of forming domains. This is the most primitive one. Then we have the bacteria and then we have the eukaryotes. Um, so we're, today we're looking at a class uh, or the kingdom protest. So these four are the kingdoms that belong within the domain eukaryotes. Now, if you're reading an old book, sometimes the way the classification was done was previously was a little different. I'm giving you the, the one that is uh, accepted today. Um, they have um, the ancestry for the Archaeans and the bacteria that is that they are much older, 3.5 billion years old, um, compared to the eukaryotes that are only 1.2 billion years. Um, wonder why? The presence of oxygen. Oxygen was not present in the earlier days. Prokaryotes are usually single-celled. Eukaryotes can be single or multi-cell. They can also have a division of labor. Uh, cells are much smaller in prokaryotes, much larger. They have cell walls. Uh, uh, these have cell walls in, for example, in plants, chitin in, in, I mean, chitin in some other uh, coatings, um, for example, in fungi, and there are none in the animal cells. No organelles. They have nucleus, mitochondria, in almost in all of them. They have metabolism, which is anaerobic or aerobic. Um, these have aer aerobic processes are the most predominant ones in the eukaryotes. Um, one chromosome versus many chromosomes in the eukaryotes. Um, they divide by by uh, by fission or budding and over here we have proper division that we learned earlier before which was mitosis and meiosis. This was just a review. Now the ancient uh, flagellates um, or the ancient protozoans are called as the flagellates because they had a flagella and one of the examples over here is shown to you is a, is a creature called as a, a euglena. Euglena is usually present in fresh water so anytime you go and grab water from the river uh, or a pond and if you happen to see it under the microscope very very likely that you will see lots of euglena. It looks like a little uh, slipper to me and then you have a little flagella. Um, it, it is uh, unwalled cells they have uh, they they have a uh, they, which is the call as a pellicle that helps it to retain shape um, they are um, they include the most ancient eukaryonic lineage these are just names I don't, you don't have to remember these names but just know uh, that you were exposed to it one time um, they these groups however lacks mitochondria and uh, they include species uh, that infect humans. For example, trichnomones is one example of a, fl of a flagellate. Um, there are also certain amoebas and uh, ciliates that are also pro protozoas. Uh, amoeba is a uh, Amoeba actually has no shape. It's like it can form um, any shape. It's got pseudopods. These arms that it forms are because of false, uh, false pseudopods, pseudo arms, because it can give you any shape. 
Another kind kind is uh, paramecium that also looks like a slipper, but this time we have no flagella. Uh, very much present in, in f uh, fresh water and in pond water in uh, both cases. Some nice pictures, right? Here is another, a picture of a dino flagellate, and these are very pretty to look under microscopes. They really have a very a unique shape, like a sometimes they look like stars even. Um, they're um, they're autotrophs, which means that they have uh, some sort of uh, a, a chlorophyll pigment in them. <clears throat> I forgot to mention, even euglenas have uh, chlorophyll in them. Um, another kind of pl uh, protest are the plasmodiums and these cause, for example, malaria. Uh, they actually invade into an insect and then they, they stay in the, and then that's how they transfer to the humans. Now let's look at um, the, the next uh, class and that is the LG. Actually, I'm going to take a break now, and we will um, we can take a little break, and then I'm going to start LG in a minute from here. Okay, so now let's begin the the section on LG. Um, LG are um, they're actually beautiful uh, if you look under the microscope. They're very pretty. They know I know they look like ugly, and they look like they're all over the the water or streams but they are the first multicellular photosynthetic organism multi because they are composed of more than one cells and they're photosynthetic because they have chlorophyll in them and they can they can be really large for example in oceans um, the seaweeds and the kelps that you see that get entangled when you're like walking on the sand are all algae uh, one of the big ones that uh, you may I mean the, the big leafy ones are called as the ULVA alva and they're really big like almost two or three feet in um, in height now the green algae is the one that we're, we are more familiar with. The green algae has generally chloroplast, and uh, they are more closer to in relatives to the to the everyday plant that you see. And here are some beautiful images of uh, of uh, the green algae. Um, again, I'm going to skip this part. Let's just forget this part. Just look at some of the pictures of the algae and they have two kinds of chlorophylls, A and B. Um, because they have two different kinds of chlorophylls, they also manufacture um, lots of um, carbohydrates and uh, that's the first uh, cell that we've actually seen that predominantly uh, will release uh, oxygen and uh, take in carbon dioxide. Um, another uh, kind of algae is the red algae. The red algae is the one that gives you the color during um, when you see those uh, lights in, in the oceans or rivers. Uh, this usually uh, red algae sends this colorful um, cyan as it's called. And um, they also have a chlorophyll, but the chlorophyll they have is usually of a different uh, pigment. So, I mean, it's usually, it's not really green chlorophyll. It's actually called as, um, trying to remember, um, hang on, I've got a, I need to stop over here. Yeah, they're called as a keratinoids. I just had a, my brain just stopped. It's it's too late at night that I'm recording this lecture. Um, so uh, these um, again have uh, they they are usually present in very deep water, very deep water that you will find these green uh, the red algae. And lastly, let's look at uh, another class that is the amoebas that I told you earlier um, and slime moles. Uh, which are called as the social amoebas and they're heterotrophic and free living. And they are the closest living protestants and relatives of the fungi and the animals. So I give you uh, lots of different terms on lots of different kinds of simple cellular um, cre creatures. Um, it, this is a pretty wide topic in biology. You can almost spend a whole semester studying protest. I spend like one semester studying algae by itself, just the algae. So this is just an overview for you, so I'm trying to be careful not to give you too much information to overwhelm you. 
So this concludes our section on protest.